Today I'm going to show you how to very easily calibrate your speakers for free in like 10 minutes. So this is what you're going to need. You need speakers, you need a computer and you need a microphone. You can use a normal USB mic like this. I also have a calibration mic. It's very cheap and <laughs> not that good to be honest, but for calibration it's probably still better than the USB mic. So there's some free software for that out there. We use Room Equalization Wizard for measuring the signal and after that uh, something like this to basically apply it. This only works for Windows but I'm sure there are equivalents for all systems. So first of all just download here the fitting version for you and if you open it this is what you're gonna see. Um, first we want to go to the preferences and select your inputs and outputs. So here let's choose for the input the in one because that's where my calibration mic is connected and for the outputs obviously just choose your speakers you can see it in here of course oh wait I have to good thing I looked haha <laughs> so now it's correct you can also calibrate your sound card and everything in there but we are lazy so we are not gonna do that so unless your sound card is from like the 80s it's probably near perfect anyway after you did that, you can go on measure. So this is how that window looks like. And you can see there's already a response um, from my microphone. <laughs> uh, first of all, what we're going to do is check levels. But before you click it, <laughs> make sure you turn down your speakers because this might get loud. And just hold your microphone where your head would be and check the levels. And let's do it. So as you can see, it says level OK. It could also be that it says level is too low or level is too high. Then you just have to turn down or up your input game or make your speakers louder or quieter. So it's a, it should say level OK. OK, that's the point. All the other settings are pretty good in the standard. You can set the frequency range from 20 to 20,000 makes sense. Uh, one sweep is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can also here are calibration files for your microphone. So, if you're using like a calibration mic or an USB mic, you might want to Google a calibration file for that microphone because even the best microphones are not a hundred percent linear. So, if you use a calibration file, that balances that out basically. So, <laughs> well, mine is pretty cheap, and I heard. The calibration files are not that accurate, but it's still better with a calibration file. And honestly, like the small differences don't make a big difference. Yeah, because they're only small. Makes sense. So, <laughs> yeah, you can just browse. And then if you have one, if you have to download it, you can choose it and open it. And then it's in there. So other than that, we can pretty much start. Just hold your mic where your head is, basically, and click on start. And then it's going to be like... A short frequency things and then let's go so that's it and as you can see we have a lot of interesting graphs here I think this is the first one you normally see a good trick to navigate is to press the middle mouse and then you can zoom in and <laughs> Very cool. Uh, let's first look at all SPA. This is basically just really the frequency response we just measured. I would recommend going here on graph and on smoothing because there are so many little peaks it doesn't make sense. Let's go on uh, yeah, something like this. This makes sense. This resolution. And as you can see, <laughs> uh, my system isn't linear at all. It's pretty horrible to be honest. Um, we have like a huge peak here in the bass and a lot of stuff so not very good. You can also check the waterfall di diagram. We basically can see how long a signal decays. Uh, the longer the worse <laughs> pretty much. We can't really balance that out but it's also interesting to see like if you have like some signals, some frequencies that 
take very long to decay, you might consider you might want to consider some room treatment or putting your speakers a little bit else where <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what we're gonna do next is just click here on EQ. This is gonna open a new window and we see our EQ curve right here. And we're just gonna see here on the right equalizer, just choose generic. Um, we are we don't have a subwoofer, we have full range speaker, that's important. Um, cut off. <laughs> we don't need a room curve either. We just want to want linear. The target level is important. So just uh, click here something and set it like somewhat in the middle, okay? I'm going to put it like here. Here is okay. Um, and then we can see that's 95, so we're going to put 95 in here. As the target level, and that's basically the level it equalizes it to, it corrects it to. Then you in the filter tasks, match range, I from 30 hertz. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe even 45 hertz. Yeah, I'm gonna start at 40 hertz to 20,000. Individual max boosts. Like, make sure you don't have the individual max boosts too high because it doesn't make sense to correct frequencies that just cancel out in the room. You know, that's just going to make it worse. So you might want to consider keeping it at zero, but for me, the room is really, really bad. So this is like, yeah, I'm going to have it at 10. You can do what you want and all the other settings, just leave them at the normal, at the default, and then just click match response to target. So this is going to take like a couple of seconds. And as you can see, it made a bunch of filters that basically, uh, wait, we can also invert filter. Now it's the same, basically. As you can see, it tried to level out the filters. So it's linear. So that looks pretty good. Just click on, where is it? Uh, export filter settings as text. We don't want any notes. And just click. Wait, where is it? Okay, and I'm just going to call this Adam A7X3 because it's the, my third time measuring it. And we're going to hit enter and we're done for room equalization with that. So let's go on to APO. This is how it looks like in APO. And what we're going to do is we're going to click here and we're going to open the calibration file we just did. Um, oh no, where did I save it? Uh, here. No. Here. And here's the filter we just measured. Now we're gonna go on config and make a new one and click on include and open it again here. And now we have it. That's it. We can activate or deactivate it. Now it's pretty much on our system. And it should work. That's horrible, right? <laughs> I can't believe it was that bad before. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time.